Even though you've been tinkering with your new desktop or laptop, you're still asking, what's the best way to move past the lock screen? That's actually the most common question asked by those new to Windows 8. You also have all sorts of questions about the login screen, the start menu, and the shutdown button. Some of those things seem to be missing, right? It's best to tackle things step by step, so you'll first learn about the lock screen. When it comes to moving past that, or in other words, unlocking the computer, you have three choices. Here's the first one. You could simply click on the mouse. It doesn't matter whether you press the left or right button. If you're among those who prefer to rely on their keyboards, then pressing any key should do the trick. After discovering those two options, you're most likely wondering whether there's really a third way of opening the lock screen. Of course there is. You have to keep in mind that more and more laptops, even the ones that are made for the budget-conscious crowd, come equipped with touch-enabled displays. As you would have guessed by now, the third method only involves a single upward swipe. Now that you know how to handle the lock screen, it's time to move on to login matters. You'd be glad to find out that Microsoft's latest OS has a login screen that's pretty much the same as those seen on other Windows editions. So, all you have to do is key in the right password and press Enter, after clicking on your own user account, that is. You're probably wondering whether Windows 8 also comes with guest access features. Well, you'd be happy to know that it does. Using the guest account is as effortless as clicking on the guest icon. If you're not sure which one it is, then just look at the text under each profile's picture. By the way, the guest account usually stays without a custom photo. Once you've chosen the right account, you'd soon realize how much Windows has changed. To be a bit more specific, you'd finally see the all-new Start screen. And yes, it's not your desktop. So, the first question that pops into your mind is this. What the heck are all those colorful tiles for? Truth be told, they're the same as desktop icons. When you click on them, programs would run. If you're wondering why Microsoft's newest operating system has an interface that's very similar to what you see on smartphones, then you need to ponder upon this fact. Windows 8 was made so that the software corporation could at least compete in the tablet market. That's why many feel like they're using something that wasn't really made for conventional PCs. It should be pointed out, though, that using the start screen doesn't have to involve a touch-enabled display, although scrolling across the tiles is easiest for those who have the option to swipe. Browsing what's on the start screen, moving from one side to another, with a mouse, is easy. You only have to roll the scroll wheel. Once you're done exploring the start screen, and finding out that the desktop has its own tile, you'd most likely think about shutting down your PC. Then, you suddenly realize something. You can't see the Start button. Don't worry, there's still a way to shut down your computer in a matter of seconds, although it's a lot more complicated now. Here's what you need to do. While you're on the desktop, you need to move the cursor, or in other words, the mouse arrow, to the display's lower rightmost area, and afterwards, when the bar-like Charms menu appears, click on Settings. If you've done that correctly, you'd see the Power button. Clicking on it reveals the Shut Down option. For those who have touchscreen PCs, there's no need to touch the display's edge just to access the Charms menu. All that needs to be done is to make an outward swiping motion near the right side corner of the screen. So, it's once again obvious that Microsoft's newest operating system was tailor-made for touch-enabled devices and not for traditional computers.